Now more than ever, it is so important to understand the need for us to not only strengthen our bodies, but to strengthen our mindset. My name is Petra Kolber. I'm a positive psychology performance coach, and it's both my honor and my privilege to have partnered with you fit gyms to bring you resources that you can use outside of the gym and in the gym of every day that we call life. Life is a gym. It's an obstacle course right now, and your brain is fatigued. You have just gone through two years of COVID and now more than ever, we are feeling so much stress, anxiety and uncertainty around the world. What is happening in the United States and globally cannot be ignored. And sometimes we feel so helpless, but the one thing that you can do and that you fit gyms is encouraging us all to do is to take the time and make yourself a priority so that your mental health can stay strong, so that you can help your family and you can help your community rise up even during hard times. Today, we're gonna to talk about resilience. And I think of resilience as interval training for your heart and your mind and your life. So this video is a short video on how to cultivate resilience. The challenging thing is resilience is not something we can train for. It's something that gets stronger by us going through challenging times. And with resilience, it is something that you do not build alone. Resilience is not built in a vacuum. So how can we build more resilience and strength and continue to be our best selves even in challenging times. I want you to imagine that resilience is a triangle or a pyramid and it's three parts. It's I am, I have, and I can. I am are all the strengths and the, and the goodness that's inside of you that can never be taken away. The I can is a willingness to show up for your life, even in the hard times, a willingness to learn new ways of looking at difficult situations, a willingness to say, I don't know how to do get through yet, a willingness to still show up for your life, even when there are days when you really don't even feel like getting out of bed. And then there's also I have, I call them your choir, five people that you could call up any time to talk about what you're, what's challenging to you, what you're going through. And then together, this, this pyramid of resilience in the times when things are going well for you, you have the courage and the strength and the confidence to look down and help someone that might need um, some more support. And you also have the strength when you need help yourself to reach up and say, I don't know how to do this. I can't do this alone. There are several things that we can do when we feel untethered. So how do we say tethered to what we know when life seems so fragile and uncertain? So sometimes it feels like the rug gets pulled from us, right? Like, oh, the rug was taken from my feet. I don't know about you right, right now, just not the rug was taken, but then the floor was taken from us. And now the floor was taken and now the foundation feels very shaky. And what will tether you to being the best you when everything else around you might seem so uncertain is your breath. And so with this short video, you'll also find a little meditation that can connect you back to your breath at any moment. Because really all we have, all we can control is this moment. And then the next moment, when stress and anxiety feel so overwhelming, I want you to stop. Because when stress and anxiety feel overwhelming, and it's not saying that that, that feeling is very, very real, but it's often when our mind has been hijacked, sometimes by the news, sometimes by people around us, sometimes by negative conversation. And even in the most challenging times, we have a choice. We have a choice to become informed, and then turn off the news. Have great conversation. When that conversation turns negative, we choose to step away from the conversation. Making conscious choices, not to ignore what's going on in the world, but make a conscious choice to be informed, be educated, and then turn off the noise. The two key ways we can connect to the best of ourselves is by paying attention to the breath that brings us into the present moment. And also the next time you feel that mind spiraling, from the news, turn it off and then stop. 
stand up. Sitting is the worst place for our stress and our anxiety. The anxiety and the stress we feel needs to move through our body. So you stand up. T, take a walk. If you can get out into nature, nature is your greatest gift or move from one room to the next, move out of the situation that you're in, even if it's to the next room, then pause. You stand up, you tea, you take a walk and then, oh, pause and observe your surroundings. Look, smell, taste, listen, because when you're in your senses, you can only be in the present moment. And that's what the guided meditation will bring to you today. It's all about coming back to your senses, literally. And then P, I'm going to encourage you to pick a positive thought, even if you don't believe it. Even when you don't believe it, still pick a positive thought because your brain cannot tell the difference between reality and what you're thinking. Find something good in your life. Maybe it's your children, maybe it's your furry family, maybe it's the sunrise, find something good and choose to hold that thought in your heart. Our brain cannot have two conflicting thoughts. It's almost like, imagine you're holding onto a steering wheel in a car and one of the hands is hope and one of the hands is fear. One of the hands is faith, one of the hands is fear. Only one hand can be controlling the steering wheel at one time. You cannot hold two conflicting thoughts in your brain. So that's why picking a positive thought is so powerful because your brain can only attract more of what it is holding. One other invitation to you today is to become aware of the difference between rumination and reflection. Rumination is that rinse and repeat of negativity. It often can be triggered by too much news, too much negative conversation, a feeling a lack of control. But when we ruminate on something, it's a rinse and repeat that can take over your entire day. Reflection, on the other hand, is looking at a similar situation, but pausing long enough, that S-T-O-P, to create a gap and come up with a solution. It might not be the perfect solution, but instead of ruminating, which is literally chewing the cud on your thoughts and just spin cycling down, you actually pause long enough to go, what is a different way of looking at this? Or what is one small thing I can do to create some positive change in myself, in my small community? And then lastly, here are a few things that you can do to build your resilience when things feel very, very uncertain. Number one is prioritize relationships. Two is join a group if you don't have a support group already of positive people. The third one is take care of your body, move your stress, move your anxiety through your body. It will not help sitting constantly, stand up whenever you can, practice mindfulness being in this moment and then the next moment. Choosing to avoid negative outlets, become informed and then turn it off. Get the information that you need, take the actions that you wanna to do to create positive change in the world and then get off the negative. One thing we can do when we feel the, like the world is out of control is actually to go and help others. So when we're helping others, we have a sense of control and that we're doing something good in the world. Be proactive in your life. Be proactive in the choices that you make and keep moving toward your goals. Sometimes life can feel so overwhelming, we get paralyzed, but keep moving small actions each day to a life of meaning and purpose will help you still get up every morning and create a life that is still moving forward, even when other areas feel out of control. Look for moments of opportunities and self-discovery. Even when things are hard, what is it we can learn about ourselves? How can we look and cultivate more resilience? How can we help others? There's a lot to be learned even in challenging times. And why this work is so important, because we can make change. But when we get swept up in the negativity, we actually become paralyzed. And as Margaret Mead so wisely said, never underestimate the power of a small group of committed people to change the world. In fact, it is the only thing that ever has.